Emperor Ai's non-conventional relationship had caused an uproar in the entire kingdom, but the emperor did not heed anyone's opinion. Instead, he brought his male concubine wherever he had built a special tomb for him and showered his male concubine with lavish gifts. In the year 27 BCE, Emperor Ai of Han created a dynasty. Prior to gaining notoriety as the notorious forefather of the proverb Passion of the Cut Sleeve, or simply Cut Sleeve, he was formerly known as Liu Xin and also held the title of Emperor Ai of Han. Xin has always held a special place in Emperor Chang's heart, and he plans to appoint her as his successor as ruler of the empire that his uncle bequeathed to him. He was so fixated on the young crown prince that he ordered that Xin should be crowned. Cheng was very determined to engrave in Xin's young mind that all he has is his uncle and no one else. Even his biological parents were deliberately removed from Xin's life. Emperor Cheng then ordered the banning of Consort Fu and Consort Ding Xin's mother from the capital and successfully cut all the ties between the parent and the child. When Emperor Chang died, Xin inherited the crown, and upon him bestowed the title of Emperor Ai of Han. When he took over the throne, Xin did his best to rule the kingdom, despite being only 20 years old, when he sat down as emperor. Xin had great plans and was able to implement most of them for the betterment of his people, unlike his uncle. Xin decided to become a hands-on ruler, cut off government expenses to favor his people, and prioritized the restriction of slavery by limiting the number of allowed slaves. A member of the noble class can take while his reign started on a good note. It was soon bombarded with controversy when his dysfunctional family entered the picture. Despite his rise to power, there are still members of the Chang family who are unhappy with the fact that someone who is not a direct descendant of the previous emperor was given the title. At the same time, the family that he was born into is expressing their dissatisfaction with the lack of recognition and title. In order to resolve this conflict, his step-grandmother, the Empress Dowager, was given the title of Empress. This diversion was helpful, but not appropriate, especially considering how it fueled the fires of hostility between the Wang clan and the Fu clan. An individual by the name of Don Xion, a young man, entered the emperor's life in the midst of all the chaos. Wang came to the conclusion that Xin's biological family should be given titles of their own in order to demonstrate inclusivity and appreciation for the benefit of all parties involved. It is interesting to note that Emperor Wen was not the first king from ancient China to openly flaunt having a male concubine by his side. However, by doing so, he did establish history this is something that should be taken into consideration. It was around the year 4 BCE when everything got started. Don Shun was just 19 years old at the time. He was an ordinary court officer and he was married to a woman. People were paying attention to Don Xion at the time because he was receiving an extraordinary number of promotions from Emperor Wan. Soon after that, Dong Xion and his wife were granted permission to stay at the Imperial Palace. But wait, there's more. It appeared as though Don Xion was advancing in his career with each new day that passed. Additionally, the emperor commanded that a lavish residence be constructed solely for the couple's use. The residents of the kingdom were once again provoked to a great deal of discourse as a result of this. In spite of the reactions of his subjects, it is important to point out that, during the time in question, it was customarily considered appropriate for emperors to keep a male concubine. Tradition among male homosexuals Brett Hinch, a historian, discovered in his book titled Passions of the Cut Sleeve, the Male Homosexual Tradition in China, that ten of the emperors who had previously ruled during the Han Dynasty were openly bisexual. He continues by quoting the Shiji as follows, Those who served the ruler and succeeded in pleasing his ears and eyes, those who caught their lord's fancy and won his favor and intimacy did so not only through the power of lust and love, each had certain abilities in which he excelled. The statement that followed was the portion that drew my attention the most. It is not only women who can use their looks to attract the eyes of the ruler courtiers and eunuchs can play that game as well. Many were the men. This was the section that stood out to me the most. The gifting of the most priceless jewelry and most unique weapons to Dongxian by Emperor Wen was a message that was broadcast across the entire empire. 
After learning that Emperor Wei had given all of his weaponry to his male concubine, Wu Zhonglong, the chief of security for the capital city, attempted to prevent the admission of the weapons, but was unsuccessful. As a result, he was tagged and assigned to work in a remote place because of his failure. If you think the emperor generously demonstrated his love for Dongxiang, then you should wait until you hear the story of how he commanded the creation of Atun for Dong. The prince took his own life after being accused of practicing witchcraft by a eunuch by the name of Sean Hong, who was then summarily removed from his position. The accusation led to the prince's dismissal from his previous role. This statement wasn't just meant to silence them, it was also another tool for the emperor to clear the way for his favored concubine. I've already explained how individuals who try to challenge the emperor's favorites are eliminated, but this response wasn't simply meant to silence them. In spite of the fact that this episode was unfortunate in every way, the emperor made use of it so that Dong Xian, who had taken responsibility for bringing the atrocity to light, could advance in his career. The following year, Wang Jia, who was then serving as prime minister, penned a lengthy letter in which he detailed his concerns over the bond that existed between the emperor and Dong, as well as what may take place in the event that the male concubine died before the emperor. Even the emperor's uncle, Ding Ming, who was in charge of all of the empire's military operations, was not spared. Following the fabrication of evidence, Wang Jia was sentenced to prison. Dong Xion took over for Wing Se and remained in that role for close to a year before succumbing to an unidentified illness and passing away. The emperor then published a proclamation in which he proclaimed his unwavering faith in Dong, as if the elevation itself wasn't substantial enough on its own. During the pronouncement, he proclaimed that heaven gave you to be the helper for the Han dynasty. I am aware of the commitment you have made. I have high hopes that you will be able to assume the helm of the most important imperial affairs. People in the public opposed it because they thought the appearance and words of the emperor to be frightening. Even though other people tried to get Dong removed from Ai's life, he remained by the emperor's side despite Ai's claim that he loved his concubine more than anyone else in the world. He stood by him through the good times and the terrible ones alike. On a straw mat, it was stated, that they both fell asleep together, with Dong Xion's head resting on Emperor Dvarn's sleeve while they slept. It is said that after Ai made the decision to go after Ai had rested, the Emperor tore off one of his sleeves and placed it under Dong Xion's head so that he might sleep. Have you ever wondered where the term cut sleeves came from? Well, since then this gesture has made a statement and is mainly associated with the adoration of two males towards each other. If you disregard the total chaos that their courtship was causing, you'll see that this is the first instance of cut sleeves being worn. Wang thinks otherwise. She knows that the former Emperor Ai was serious about bestowing the entire dynasty to prevent Dong Xion from taking the throne. She immediately grabbed the imperial seal to prevent Dong Xion from taking over. Then she reinstated her relative Wang Meng and transferred command of the military to him after that. Wang Meng used his power to frame up Dong and accused him of failing to attend to Ai needs, which ultimately led to his passing. Soon after, he was banned from the palace and stripped of his titles because of this Dong and his wife took their own life. Dong never ended up in the fancy tomb Emperor Ai built for him. Instead, Wang Meng had him buried in prison with the entire Dong family banished and disinherited of all their assets. A lot of people have different opinions about the relationship between Emperor Ai and Dong Xian, but one thing is for sure, their story left a mark on history so deep that whenever you see a sleeve being cut, you will remember them and the relationship they shared. Thanks for watching. Bye.